this is Carrie Rhodes with CarrieStamps.com. Today I'm going to be sharing a card with you that I made using a print from my gel press. This is the card right here. You can see this background paper. This is a print that I made using my gel press. So on the gel press I squirted some paint, some acrylic paint from Fun Stamper's Journey, brayered it on, and then used a stencil to get these polka dots right here. And then I was able to lift a print and get an amazing background paper that is unique, one of a kind. The gel press is so fun, you guys, to play with and make your own background papers. I know that you're going to love it. So here's a card made using a piece of the paper that I made, and I love it. So let me show you how I made this card. All right, guys, here's the card again that we're going to be making on this video today, featuring a piece of paper that I made on my gel press to create this print. And here you can see the entire um, piece of paper before I cut it up. And here is the piece that I'm gonna be using on the card today. You can see these little um, bits that I picked up along with my print. That happens when you make a print pull the print and there's still paint left on your plate and you let that paint dry and then you just leave it there and then you make a new print and then you pick up what is left behind or dried on the plate with that new print. I love this technique. In a class I took she called let it ride. So I let those bits ride on there. All right, so to make our card, we're gonna be using the Hello Fall stamp set. I love these leaves and the fact that it has four sentiments that come with it. It's a great set. What else makes it great is that it comes with a set of dies that cut out all your leaves for you and even the little acorn. So I'm gonna be using those on my card today. We're starting with a piece of whipped cream cardstock that is four and a fourth by 11 and it's been creased and folded in half and we're going to stamp it with the canvas background and pineapple smoothie ink. Now when I ink this up I'm not going to get the ink everywhere. I'm just going to get most of it covered and then I lay my card whoo, on it and when I ink it I'm just going to lightly rub it. I'm not trying to get complete ink coverage. So you can see there's some spots with ink and some without. That's the look that I'm going for on this card. Then I want to add some splatter. So I'm going to bring in my box that I like to put my card in whenever I'm using my silks. This is gold silk. Um, the pigment gets collected in the bottom so you always want to make sure that you're shaking that up to mix that shimmer in with the liquid. And then you're just going to use this like so to get that splatter effect on there. And then you can add as much or as little as you like. And you can see the box is handy there for collecting the excess <laughs> splatter that occurs so it doesn't get all over everything. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. This doesn't take long to dry, but we're gonna work on the other parts of our card now. So I'm gonna turn my piece of paper this way. I feel like I'm gonna get those pieces to show better if I have it turned. And I'm gonna stamp with dark roast ink the sentiment from my Hello Fall stamp set that says thankful. And that will go in the bottom right corner of my piece here. Cool. Okay, now this is going to be mounted on a piece of Blue Lagoon cardstock. I picked Blue Lagoon because it's one of the paint colors that I used when making my gel press print. I don't know if you knew this, but Fun Stamper's Journey has its own collection of acrylic paints. So when I'm making prints on my gel press, I know that when I'm done, it's gonna coordinate with my cardstock and my ink pads because the paint is the same color. So another bonus of having 
our own collection of paints. So I just have a border across the top and the bottom and not the side because this piece is gonna go all the way to the edge of my card. It's actually four and a fourth inches long and two and a half inches wide. So the base is two and three fourths inches wide. Okay, so we're done with that. Now I'm gonna show you how I got the blue specks on this piece of cardstock. Right, we're going to okay. take a piece of whipped cream cardstock and to get the spray so it's not completely saturating the paper, I'm going to put the paper on one side of the box and I'm going to spray towards the other side of the box with my Blue Lagoon Splash. So we're going to shake it up first like we always do so the pigment is mixed all through the liquid and then I'm going to spray this way and the kind of the back spray is what gets on the cardstock. So you just get this little bit here. Now we're gonna stamp this and we're gonna bring in back the pineapple smoothie, orange cream sickle, and blue lagoon. It really is one of my favorite colors. So the largest leaf is the one we're going to ink up with the pineapple smoothie and we're gonna stamp it right onto this um, speckled background. Beautiful. Then we're going to use the creamsicle for the medium or smaller leaf. Let's see. I like that area of speckles. And then the acorn, we'll go ahead and ink with the Blue Lagoon. Not really your typical acorn color, but I like it for this card. And now the blue speckles aren't gonna show up on the acorn because it's the same color as the splash that I used. Then we're gonna take these and use those dies I showed you to cut them all out. I've got my die cut leaves and all the pieces for my card. So these are going to be mounted onto my panel here with some foam squares. Oh, so you can see here the side that I felt had too much blue splatter. And so I redid the other side and I liked this side a lot better. I like the subtle part. So don't be afraid to use both sides of your cardstock. It is really nice that it's two sided. All right, so this will go on here at a bit of an angle and the same with this medium leaf here and I'm going to overlap these just a little bit and the acorn gets his own foam square that's just going to go in this little spot right here then we can attach this Ooh to the card with some journey craft glue. I like to add a little glue to the center. And this is gonna go on the lower part of our card. I like to leave about, I guess a half inch there. And if you're worried about the placement of your leaves, you could always glue this on and then do your leaves so you don't get any of them hanging off there. Now we're gonna dress this up oh, just a little bit more we're going to add a little bow of um, natural thread here. I just leave it on the roll while I tie it and then I can adjust it and cut it off. So make whatever size bow you like and then we will cut that and stick it on with a glue dot. And now my knot is really small so I'm actually going to roll my glue dot up making a little bit smaller and then I can stick this right onto that glue dot. These things however are very staticky. <laughs> All right there's that and then last detail I'm going to add are some of our fashion gold pearls. I'm going to use my bloom tool with the pointed end here. Just scoot your pearl off and then you can grab it and stick it down. If you scoot it, you're more likely to get that 
um, glue dot with it. I think this one's going to go up here. Let me get my tiny one. These ones I have to chase around a little bit more. And let's see, that'll go here. And there's my card. Pretty quick and easy. I love all the little different layers of texture and splatter and the non-traditional colors, but that light orange and the blue just um, complement each other and pop so well. All right, there you have it. But wait, there's more. As soon as I stopped my video, I realized I left a piece off. On my original card, I have these orange strips, the orange cream sickle. And um, all it is is just a piece of cardstock that I tore off. And then I made um, little pieces to glue onto my card. So I thought I'd bring you back real quick and go ahead and add those. I should be able to glue them on still and get them under that little lip. Of course, I did leave my glue out without the lid on, so we'll see if that's gonna work with me today. There it is. All right, so I had one piece up here, and this really is better if you put it on before you glue everything down on your card, but you know, sometimes we get in a rush or we forget something. I'm sure it's happened to you before too. So we can always make it work, and really the card was just fine, um, you know, if I didn't add this detail, but I think that it really adds something to the card. Let's see if I can make it work. Once it's glued on there, maybe I can, probably should have glued it down the other way. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter so that it is not hanging off the card. It just has a little, there we go, a little bit of, of the orange peeking out. And I just love that little extra texture and detail on there. So that's what I brought you back for, was to show you that little piece that I left off. And I really felt like it added to the card, so I had to do it. So there's your finished card. Thanks so much guys. If you're interested in any of the products that I used, the stamps, the splashes, the silk, the gel press, all of the things I used to make this card, you can find on my store. It's www.funstampersjourney.com slash carry stamps. And then you can find the area to shop. You can find a link on joining the journey. If you're interested in becoming a coach, there's a spot for you to read about that. And there's more information about this card and all the products that I used on my blog, carrystamps.com. Thanks so much for visiting me and letting me share what I love with you. <music>